Hello there. Hi, everyone. This is DJ. This is Marco. And this is CG Talks, the podcast where CG guys talk about CG. So, as you can hear today, among we're... other things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as you can hear today, we are just uh, two of us. Andrew is missing out on today's episode. <laughs> but hopefully yeah. he'll get back. He'll get back with us as soon as possible. And today's topic that we prepared is kind of like, like a loose one. We want to talk about the most favorite part of the 3D pipeline. So yeah, was a nice topic favorite... to, to get into, actually. It is a shame that Andrew couldn't join us. Yeah, I guess this is the, the topic that kind of changes over time. So per- perhaps we'll have a chance to return to that or or just like maybe, you know, give Andrew an opportunity to, to give some of his some of his thoughts once he returns just in a, another episode. Don't know. But today we'll just have a loose chat. So it's a blender only today for <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> although I had although I had as you know opportunity to work in 3ds Max as well, which I didn't really super enjoy while I find some good things about Max after using it for some time, but I really preferred Blender. That's maybe, you know, this this type of thing, like the first love of yours, right? You just stick to it. If you started out with Blender, just learn 3D in the Blender way, sort of. So. Well, it took me some uh, feet dipping. Like, so I used to, I mean, I, I, I took some, I took my time, like, uh, finding the right one for me. Um, but when I yeah when I when I discovered Blender it was a it was a revelation <laughs> and it's been Blender ever since. Yeah, I guess you know the, especially the modeling part that I found in Max was kind of hard for me and I really uh, you know the it's it, it has its own different way of working so and in Blender it's like everything seems so intuitive for me like after maybe after so many years of using it and. Generally, like after transitioning to the 2.80 and later branches, things got just like so streamlined in, st- in terms of modeling and, you know, just doing stuff you want to do. I'm thinking that's <clears throat> that's one of the advantages of Blender. Yeah, I'd say so. That's also kind of what turned me on to it was, uh, I think at the time I was using Cinema 4D and I, I kind of enjoyed the workflow. It was pretty intuitive, uh, but um yeah modeling was always very uh limiting it seemed very limited for me there like i i felt like i could only really feel at home with a with the box modeling sort of approach but uh yeah uh, discovering like the the what you could do in terms of like poly by podly modeling and blender really um and the 3d cursor was really was, was really uh something new for me and i i, I really appreciated that of course, now, uh, like practically everything um, has been made so much more intuitive and fun to do within the software. And so, uh, yeah, no regrets at all. Yeah, I'm thinking like one of, <clears throat> one of the strong points, like it, it, it's, it's maybe a little bit of a, of a weak point. Some, some people think like, you know, Blender trying to be like the tool for all things. But this is really like uh, also giving you advantage of of like not having to to own uh, you know different software for each pipeline uh, pipeline element like uh, or or buying special plugins for for each part you can really like do everything in Blender so it kind of like gives you an option to to dip your fingers into different pi- parts of the three D workflow like for example sculpting which is uh, you no know, you can of course. Everyone probably agrees that that ZBrush is the king of of this area, but you know you you can do pretty decent stuff in Blender. And right now, with the additions that Pablo Davaro made, it's even even better, and it's getting better all the time. It's just performance that it needs to boost mm-hmm. probably, and then it's which is also being worked on actually. And if you if you if if you tried the have you tried the latest nightly builds? No, not really. I'm just. Uh, Trying to stick to the official releases mm, and yeah. not not into nightly builds. So oh. It's already a mess, you know. <laughs> trying to record tutorials. Uh, oh yeah, with, for uh, sure. With the ever changing versions, and you kind of try to tend to lose track on which version you're working on and which little feature was added when. But yeah, 
Yeah. But 2.91 will be out soon, I, at least at least so I hear from the last Blender Today episode. And, uh, well, I, I, I have been messing around with it just a bit. And I noticed, like, uh, in terms of sculpting, um, yeah, it, it has been. Performance is noticeably better. And it's much easier to work with denser uh, meshes, at least in, from what I've seen so far. Um, but that kind of brings me to to like so uh, going into like the the subject of today's episode. Um, that actually, I think that the reason I enjoy using Blender so much is because it's perfect for my favorite part of the three D pipeline, which arguably uh, isn't even really part of a three D pipeline. Arguably, but it's it's the concepting phase. Like I, I kind of enjoy that that. Uh, initial kind of um, the the first few moments when you're kind of trying to figure out sort of what uh, what kind of look you're going for, especially um, or, or you know, especially when it comes to like trying to create like a small skit or something like that. Um, uh, trying to figure out sort of with some sketching what um, what sort of look you're trying to achieve, or or even uh, you know what 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 the elements in your scene are supposed to look like, uh, and then kind of trying to make prototypes um, of these things in within Blender. I mean, I find it really easy. Uh, I mean, in terms of 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 blend of of uh, like software, it, it Blender is very you know it makes it really easy to to bust something out really quickly. Um, and then get it to a level of refinement that will at least give you a sense of of uh, how everything is going to look and feel like, and then allow you to make changes without really uh, having any consequences. You know, like I think last episode I, I mentioned how infuri- infuriating it was for me um, to to have to kind of when I was starting out go through. All, like the different steps of the pipeline only to kind of not be satisfied with the end result and then trace the issue back to like an early stage thing and then having to go back and 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 go through parts of the pipeline again just felt really you know uh really tedious but um today like uh you know the the latest versions of blender like just all of the little features that have been added in kind of work together to make it a really easy and you know almost uh like seamless experience like it's not really that big of a deal um i mean for instance like f- like a big thing for me is uh being able to, s- to sculpt the character and then not uh you know um and just kind of try to get the like check the shapes and and uh kind of pose the character uh, like like I used to I used to have to kind of um, make a make a rough retopologized version of it and then pose it uh, just so I could kind of block in um, shots, you know, and like like work on compositions for shots. Now uh, I can do that straight from you know I, I can I can sculpt and then use the pose brush for example to. To, to place everything together, lay everything out, and then um, kind of see if, you know, the shape, like when it deforms, still looks kind of good. And then maybe I realize like, oh, maybe, you know, this guy needs some sort of, uh, like some, needs something on his back or or maybe this element needs to be removed or maybe, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. And, and, and the, even using the workspace, um, like just switching to the workspace, uh, render mode kind of oh sorry not workspace workbench and then ch- um, activating like the cavity and the, the flat you know uh, you know those yeah, different I, viewport I find, I find settings that, yeah. I find that you know th- this is kind of a little bit uh, along the lines of your thinking like um, I'm really enjoying the part wherever wherever what, you know whether it's uh, it's a realistic um, you know art we've seen or or some kind of a different thing like for example lately i've been i've been working on this uh, little uh, among us uh, among us game art uh, fan art 3d 
piece and uh, so it was it was kind of abstract and a little bit cartoonish and i i really tend to very much like the the phase where where you have the, like the basic elements set up and then you just go for that for that look that phase like i would i would if i was to like spe- specifically point out the favorite part of 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 3D is, for me is like the the look dev and i i find it like between shading texturing and lighting so this part uh, regarding lighting is giving you so much you know so much uh, power in terms of creating the mood of the scene uh, getting out the best of the of the models that you have you can convey so much emotion and, and you know impact with with that in your scene, in your, it's just like playing with photography. You you set up the lighting, you set up the the lens, set up the shot, and boom, there's the picture, right? So you have you have like the full control of over all of the of your all of your virtual rea- reality in that. And Blender is all really awesome, like with the introducing EV and the the workbench workspace, like. Like every single software right now goes that direction, right? Uh, it's not not kind of like a Blender only thing, but I think Blender does a really good job at that uh, right now, and yeah, giving you the the feedback live. You know this, um, e- even using cycles in a in a you know rendering mode, it gives you the you know the possibility of quickly looking at how really the final scene will look after rendering, even if it's just like a pixelated preview if you don't have the, the best possible yeah. equipment at, yeah. your, at hand but it's all, always like it gives you the feeling that that you you change you know you, you move a few lights here and there and it just dramatically changes the, uh, the shot for example so I'm kind of finding this pretty enjoyable and I'm really enjoying that Blender gives you this kind of a kid bashing feel that you can drop in something, you know. I, I, for example, in this last scene, I was just like using quick effects for for smoke creation and stuff like that, and that might be, you know, one of the the least the least pleasure pleasurable for me. Like I I do that because I need that, you know. For example, making simulations of the smoke of fluids or whatever. If you need that for a little thing in your scene, just to add that extra touch of a physical realism to the scene but then this is a <laughs> this can be a really pain in the ass you know the simulation stuff cuz it's kind of like yeah, so many totally. there are so many variables there and i find and that it's, it's if, tough even on if, the if, system right like yeah it's tough on the system it's on the on uh, tough on the hardware it's tough on your understanding of things cuz so many things get convoluted there and even when i tried doing tutorials on that topic uh i found that there were I was trying really to to lay out some things really simply, and then you find that some people fi- find the tutorials confusing, even though they are quite straightforward. But this is just like such a hard topic to to understand yourself, and then just to give someone a really good explanation of how f- how to deal with that because it's it's just not that simple, right? Yeah, so, and what's worse, what's worse is like, well, you know, unless you have a really beefy um, you know, workstation. I mean, it like in when I when I try to do those things, it's like you you know just having to go through. Like it's sort of the same kind of frustration you get from from the older days when you had to kind of take so many steps back, and each step was just you know took so long to achieve. And in this case, like you know, like making a simulation, if you want to make an adjustment to a parameter. Uh, like at least in my case, like I'd have to get rid of all of the bakes. I'd have to kind of wait for ev- for 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 uh, the frames to update as I'm as I'm trying to audition. You know, um, uh, like like the the look of a certain thing, or 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 I'd have to like run the bakes again just to see if it will look okay, and then just co- sort of there's that back and forth between. Ah, uh, is this like is this kind of is are the flames kind of uh, like spitting out you know are the are the are the tongues of flame looking right not really delete the bakes uh make some settings setting adjustments and then running the bake again because it would take even longer maybe to just play it back in real time waiting for the bake to finish checking it out not being satisfied and then 
and just yeah. it, it just takes so much time. Yeah, yeah I guess I guess that's the, one of the reasons why why, for example, Marvel's designer got so mu- so popular because it gave this feeling of realistic simulation of of the uh, cloth, and you could really interact it with the uh, with the cloth in you know in real time and see how it goes. You know, just position it, throw pillows on your couch or whatever, just live, and that's. You know, that's just giving this pleasurable way of interacting with your simulations. If you had that for for different stuff like smoke, explosions, and stuff, I guess you know, uh, it's probably not that simple to implement. Because if if it was, then somebody would have written that a long time yeah. ago. But uh, although uh, I'm, uh, there is, I'm guessing there that is... this is this is go- going to appear sometime in the future. Yeah, like... somebody in somebody made an add-on in Blender actually called. Uh... Let me have a quick look. Uh, oh, or maybe it's not supported in 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 two point nine anymore. But um, ah, jeez, I forgot what it was called. But it, some a guy made a a really a really um nice cloth add-on that kind of operated similarly to Marvelous Designer, and and the basic feature sets were there real time mm-hmm. like simulation plus uh you know generating um uh sewing lines between mm-hmm. uh both your shapes and and you would work the same way you know like mm-hmm. create the cutouts and then yeah, yeah simulate right, right, and right now uh, right now the, the work the work that's uh, done by Pablo Devaro really t- like takes that that whole idea into the sculpting feature set right with, with the uh, the mesh uh, filter yeah, cloth yeah. mesh filter, and then you can just tweak or tweak a little bit of settings. Use different yeah. brushes with the cloth simulation, and it already respects collisions. And have, I think it does. So yeah, you, in this newer yeah. release, yeah. Although it so is kind you, of, uh, I mean, it 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 also will take uh, a toll on obviously on your on your hardware. I mean, yeah, I think I think there's a point where you know, like maybe maybe I just need to upgrade my my rig. But but uh, yeah yeah totally. It's it's. Uh, it's getting it's getting crazy. Oh, but sorry, but to um, I feel like I should plug modeling cloth by Rich Colburn. Um, yeah. So this is the add-on he he gave out to you know he gave out for free. Um, I think if you look him up, he'll we'll 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 add a link to the in the you know in the description later on. But uh, yeah, yeah, really amazing work. Of course, of course, you can always day. you can also I think buy this add-on on the Blender market. So. Does, yeah, this is kind support, of like a yeah. way to support the the developer, which is highly encouraged because you know people are investing so much time and effort into making these awesome tools for us. And yeah, I guess that's a nice thing to do if you want to support definitely, the development of, of stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So so. Okay, so, so for that, you, that, it's... Yeah, that that was that was uh, kind of like also drifting into the least favorite part of the pipeline, right? Because it's yeah, kind well, of I like guess we can you always have these favorites, yeah. and yeah, and we can talk about the the parts that we don't like. And I guess for for all people, is I think UV unwrapping or yeah, other, I don't like. I have people... never met anyone who ju- who looks forward to that. Recently, I've been trying to also retopologize a little bit. I'm doing. I was doing a private uh, project for, you know, just a, a fan art of a comic character that I like from my childhood, and uh, I'm trying to retopologize the character. I'm really doing this like the character retopology like the first time, really. So I've this time I find it pretty interesting because it's the learning and stuff. I probably enjoy it, but I've found that people generally tend to not like the the retopology process because it's just like something you have to do well i think i think that uh because i used to do it quite a lot but i think that um it if you're if your end goal is to create a still image uh like there are so many tools and features now that mm, make it unnecessary i mean like you don't even really need to worry too much about uh you know like like you need you need decent topology to te- to uv unwrap and texture but uh there there are ways to achieve that i guess without having to hand uh yeah. 
Ha- yeah, you was, know, or or was, you could but clearly, not worry about loops or anything like that. Yeah, but I was clearly okay. clearly aiming for that character to be animated in the end. So that's yeah, yeah. So that it's always a good investment in that case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are nice add-ons for that, I guess. But I'm really like trying to use that Blender vanilla for for that, not using any add-ons like Retopo Flow or uh, things like that. Yeah, uh, I think. Well, I think like for the mm-hmm. basic stuff you you need to do for retopology, like Blender has some features that are already uh, allowing nice yeah, I, results. And like I think, for example, the shrink wrap modifier and some stuff, additional stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, F, the F two for example. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I find it kind of. I, I it's actually it's quite enjoyable to do in Blender. I think I don't um, if <laughs> try doing retopology and like. Uh, I don't know how easy it is now, but I think like there was a time there was a time when I was using Maya. Uh, I tried doing it in Maya. I think it might have been twenty fifteen. Um, and I gotta say it was horrible. It was a horrible experience, including like all of the crashes that would happen midway. It's just you know, but but yeah. So uh, doing it in Blender really felt like sort of a, a you know, it felt like a gift. <laughs> Like to, to just be able to to really not have to worry about uh, any crashes happening and and be able to just it I don't know I've always felt like it it like it, it's so much easier to move around like there are things you have to kind of uh, like UI wise maybe you kind of have to find things from all over the place but there's a sense of just being able to do whatever and 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 move things around and and just really. Uh yeah, like if you're a messy worker like I am, you can you can really appreciate like not having to you know like just uh like sometimes I'll 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 sculpt something for example on a nightly build to try a new feature, and then I just copy paste the object and paste it into uh you know the stable version and and because it's it's just a mesh there's there's really not much that can go wrong so. I mean, like sometimes I'll have like so many instances of Blender open at a time, like and then just like bouncing between <laughs> different things until you know, and then I just end up pasting everything into like one final scene. Thing, you know, like it just it just feels uh, it feels like I I feel kind of safe like being able to do that. Like I know that you know it's not gonna crash and it doesn't take long to start up. Like it like a lot of other programs that take you know literally minutes before you can actually you know see a blank screen on your on your on your monitor um so mm-hmm. yeah like I, uh yeah so retopology for me is in blender is is a is is a joy like relatively speaking yeah i'm thinking that one thing that i've really missed out on uh, always like is the post production and uh, as I've been watching like tutorials for from uh, guys at uh, Arcy Nine channel, they're pretty pretty nice uh, tutorials for Arcy's artists. Uh, and their motto was always like do it in post. And the guy was showing all all those cool techniques in Photoshop and stuff, which I really kind of like. Did I did the post production for each of my works, but kind of just did the. Uh, you know, bare minimum of it. Not really, was not really into any digital painting a lot and stuff. Just just did the basic, you know, curve corrections, uh, like maybe small minor minor changes of contrast colors or whatever. And, uh, you know, maybe some retouching, but really no, no sophisticated stuff. Even up to now, I tend to like omit the awesome features of, <clears throat> well, I'm not using Photoshop, but the affinity right now, but uh, there are a lot of cool you know, ways of selecting elements in your scene, in your 2D uh, software, but I really tend to just prepare all the, all the masks in Blender, just using crypto mats or whatever. Yeah, it makes it much easier. To yeah, do, it's, yeah, it's easier. You, you just have to remember that about, you know, setting up the scene correctly, but yeah, I just tend to... <laughs> uh, Perhaps it's just because this is the last part of the project, really, and you kind of so 
almost always like it's kind of I'm already almost there kind of everything is set up everything is almost there and just like it needs that extra little push for the final look but so so I I kind of feel that I'm missing out a lot of opportunities there because it it gives you just uh, a lot of possibilities but I just didn't really dig into that deep enough to be able to use that and it's really you know sometimes uh, getting pleasure out of a each uh, part of a pipeline it's really it comes down to really knowing what you're doing there because if you don't do that a lot you're kind of like always searching for the solution then once you have well pretty... I guess that's kind of true but I don't know I mean like uh i kind of really enjoyed i think it depends because like there are certain things that that make it that are conducive to exploration you know like even if you don't really know uh you've never really used it before done it before um it it you can have fun kind of where you just just uh ex- exploring and 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 finding your way around it and there are other things that uh are pretty esoteric for for someone starting out for example and are also not very rewarding because um it's tedious you don't really have uh you don't really like it like the result uh is more of mm-hmm. i think like for example uv unwrapping like the goal of uv unwrapping is to kind of like load in a checker tester and make sure that you have these even distribution of of uh of texels for example across your mesh mm. um if that's the right term but you know what i mean like like just being just being able to see that okay yeah, when just, i texture yeah, this just to avoid avoid the I possible will, issues yeah, with the stretching the so, texture right some parts yeah of. so your biggest achievement is you your mesh will not have any artifacts Hooray! you know it's not like it's not like uh uh, I mean, there are there. I guess you can find some. You can exercise creativity in how you might uh, like optimize the space, like the UV space. Um, but but you know, I mean, it, yeah, it's just, kind of technical in its core, right? It's, yeah, it's, like you could you could um, oh again, you could animate something really badly, but just seeing it move in the in a viewport is its own like reward, you know. But then. Mm-hmm. Uh, so another part of the pipeline that personally, uh, like I have to admit, like I, I really tried to go deep on it when I was starting out, um, but it's I think it might have been already uh, like two, three or so years since I've ever actually done it by hand or longer. Um, rigging, like I I don't know. I mean, it just like like the. Like I think what used to motivate me before was like, look, if you do this, if you, if you really like, if you make sure your hierarchy is correct, and you you've built the right IK chains in the right way, like your character, you're gonna have so much fun moving your character around. It's gonna mm-hmm. be great. Like all the weight yeah, painting, that's, like that's, it's gonna be yeah. great. But now it's like you know, even even in Vanilla Blender, like you just you, you can use Rigify. Uh, you just generate you know your rigs and then, um. Yeah, but doing doing the rig correctly, it's just yeah, is is the technical thing you need to do in order to have the the right you know tool set for the final animation, right? So yeah, it's kind of like yeah, yeah it, this, this is also very like a technical, very technical, yeah, a very technical thing that you do, and the result is really just you need to have a really good reason to do the rig, right? So so that you really want to reuse the the character that you're going to animate in a lot of shots and stuff. So if you're if you're just trying to do a a character to pose in a steel shot, there's really no big incentive to do a rig like a proper rig. But if you yeah, if you want to do something more, that's. I'm guessing that the, you know there there are some parts that are really like these arcane things in 3D, and it's kind of like a little bit. I was also trying to to get into some other of other more art. Let's sort of say arcane things in in uh, around 3d like for example scripting in python i was uh, always kind of like a little bit jealous for the people who are able to uh, automate some stuff and never really touched on it it's kind of a little bit similar to the whole note note thing because it's it's just like create creating algorithms and setups for 
doing stuff. And I'm finding that this is uh, this has this steep kind of like learning curve. If you you have to like step through a threshold of not uh, just yeah of just being able to do basic stuff in it, in order to get a, a little bit of a, this uh, return, this reward that you're t- talking about, right? So uh, uh, like doing the first thing that really works, some something like. I had this similar thing with this November things that uh, that is going around right now. Like every time you look at these, you know, magicians that are doing these crazy nodes uh, with, uh, you know, vector displacement and stuff like S- Simon Toms, for example, uh, and you're just <laughs> watching the sphere in Blender that's suddenly turning into an animated object <laughs> with all those crazy things, and you feel like I will, I will never be able to do that and then if you take a look at some of the tutorials that uh, these guys are releasing it's not really la- that complicated if you take this down into single steps that they are going through but then you have to kind of like really understand what's going on there the math bef- behind it and once you get a little at least a little bit of grip on on this whole idea then you tend to have start to have control over what you're doing with this procedural stuff, and uh, well, what I'm what I'm getting to is is kind of to start enjoying some stuff in 3D. You have to like push through this threshold, in initial threshold. Uh, oh yeah, I agree with that. Perhaps it's the same with the with rigging and everything. Else. Actually, I think like just just being able to come up with a final rendered still in 3D. Uh, it takes a lot of like. There's a lot of things outside of anyone's comfort zone. I think starting out, I guess, unless you're unless you're you have a knack for uh, computers. I guess. no, I don't know. I, I but but I think that if you like, you'd probably start uh, wanting to create to to like most of the time. Chances are people uh, kind of become interested in three D because of some um art like art inclination yeah. you know you wanna, like you like want you, you want to do something particular like a character or maybe y- yeah, a car yeah. like like blender yeah, yeah. always said that he wanted to do a car so that's yeah, why, that's why yeah. he started with blender right? like i wanted to do 3d you know interior visualization so and i started off using blender because it was available it seemed like a good good free tool for that and like in the long run, it turned out to be a very good decision, I believe. Uh, like what I was also trying to say is that, uh, you know, once going into these more sophisticated parts uh, of of you know three D arcane knowledge, let's say you know these things that seem too hard to really grasp on, it's I think it's important to really uh, like learn to to get some joy out of these little things that you don't really you're <clears throat> you, you're not going to be like these guys that are kind of like ahead of you a few years <laughs> at first you have to just like at least get something and be proud of being able to do at least this and then just push forward to to get more things done like for example i had these november guys that are doing so crazy you know mm, Really crazy and really good looking final results, and I was less able to do like the basic, you know, some basic shape and at least doing a little bit of what I wanted, right? <laughs> Not exactly, maybe, but just a little bit of a control over the shader network, and that already like gave a feeling that well, maybe it's not that great, but at least it's something, right? Yeah, totally. Better, better, I mean, better it's yours. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I mean personally I just I'm I'm just really I guess glad that I exist in a time when you're assen- you can essentially you know like uh uh create your own like little sets and and uh and characters and things and just bring them to life um you know within the comfort of your your desktop and i i think initially my my impression of like 3d when i when i was starting out was like uh 
it it just seemed like such a clunky process like everything about it seemed like um you know so much fiddling that that kind of took that kind of uh pulled you away from like whatever creative momentum you had you know um but yeah like 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 blender made it so much easier for me and now it's like even even easier so like it, it's nice yeah, it's, it's kind of like I, it's kind of like we're at the point where you can box. actually yeah yeah you, can, yeah, you have yeah, a you toy, toy box really, under your yeah under yeah. your hands right yeah you can just whip things out and like oh there it is and you just <laughs> Just, yeah, and it's uh, not just and it's not just Blender. You can you know experiment with all those crazy stuff out there, experimental stuff that's open. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, like you did with this P four HD, for example. Just you know uh, playing yeah, around yeah. With, with with you know so art breeder that things, we mentioned. Yeah, and, and you can just like search, experiment, and yeah. build, build, destroy, mess around, <laughs> and just find some cool things. In and there. not to mention, like if you if you uh like if you like the kit bash or you're not really particular about you know like oh i just need a robot or i just need a tree or whatever i'm not really invested in uh actually making said robot or tree for example um like today like i could just you know anyone can just kind of go online and check out like these various 3d printing sites that have these sample meshes and i think there was this one called uh uh Thangs, I think, you know, like, mm-hmm. uh, so, and, and this site basically is a community driven site where people upload their SDL files for 3d printing. So you can find like anything from like an obscure, uh, part for some kind of device to like a leg, like literally like one human leg, you know, but I, but there's something about that. that's pretty pretty exciting for me like it just kind of uh like i used to watch a lot of like these um these behind the scenes featurettes for movies that i liked and then they'd always like at some point feature the set designer or the production team and uh, there's always sort of that kind of you know uh like um like i forgot the, the the actual movie but there was this one instance where uh like they they had to they made these like uh, oh for evil dead i think like the third installment of evil dead like they had to because like their their skeletons were being whacked at all the time like they had to find like uh you know these 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 pieces of like skeletons lying around somewhere in the back room to quickly replace uh to touch up like one of the one of their dummies you know for the next shot and sort of that picture of people scrambling around for for parts and just kind of like uh yeah like bashing things together you know i i i I find that like a charming uh kind of idea so see being able to 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 do that now by just like frantically typing your search query in google (laughs) and finding a site where you can download you know all sorts of different things it just makes things uh really interesting like you can do a bit of of everything now you're not limited yeah. to like no oh, you know you oh you want to take you want to do 3d you want to make some animation so but you're gonna have to yeah, right. but, model but everything this, yourself and you be yeah, everything but, yourself. but this but this frantically typing in google that's that's one of the like least favorite for, for me because you you have to do that from time to time you know just like searching answers for your mm, like it's good that there there is a lot of knowledge and stuff uh, around the internet but sometimes you know the searching part <laughs> this is the hardest one when when you you know jump into a problem and you want a solution well it's it's great that you really are able to quickly find solutions nowadays like by googling and by going to forums or whatever online communities yeah. that are responsive but you know sometimes this, this well can get... but the nice thing for me, about for me, it is it turns out to be a rabbit hole sometimes you know just yeah yeah the nice thing about it is some... like if you don't have the if you don't have the if if you can't find the solution anywhere but then you work at it on your own and come up with a solution then you can be the one to share that solution so you know that's yeah. that's a nice thing i don't know but i get what you mean like sometimes sometimes you're just not you just don't want to have any of it like i just i just want like 
Yeah, I, I just want to get rid of this gimbal lock. Yeah, the, my, the problem you know, the problem, the problem is that or... sometimes the, the, sometimes this uh, these search en engines are kind of not aligned with if you have a specific niche problem that you want to find a solution to, and the the engines are providing you with everything else around this problem but but this solution that you're looking for right yeah. so that, that you for example watch it on youtube is might maybe even sometimes worse if you try to you know search for a tutorial for a very specific thing and then you come up with a lot of tutorials that are, are kind of around the topic but not really into the particular thing that you want that you want a solution for well that's sometimes getting tricky right yeah for sure uh but you know, I mean, I I guess it's still better than, um, it's still nice to have for the times when like there's still a lot of time that's saved, right? Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I mean, the alternative would have been, I don't know, like driving to a library, finding a book, hoping yeah, right. in that book something even remotely close to the topic that you need to address is covered, right? And then. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it it I I, but yeah, I, I see what you mean. But uh, I personally, I some like most of the time, I enjoy the the thrill of the hunt for <laughs> for the you know for the answer that'll that'll make my day. Um, yeah, but. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think like it, it's actually it's funny because all of like lately it feels like everything is sort of just melting together now. And I think it's because it's just easier to move from one pipeline to the other. Um, and it's it's much easier to even kind of like there are certain things that are automated um, that kind of would normally take a lot of time. Uh, to do before before moving from one pipeline to the other, like uh, I I use lately. I've been using a lot of like the cleanup tools uh, in 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 Blender now, um, and I think a lot of them are meant for uh, checking the integrity of a model for printing. But uh, like like one thing that always I always seem to have like struggle with when I do retopology is I always end up with um like hidden overlapping faces somewhere uh and it's it's really not like you know like you do the standard uh, like subdivision tests and um and the uh, uh merge by distance operation you know just to like remove any double uh components on the mesh um but then and then you think you're good and then you like you're 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 rigging the mesh and then you realize like oh crap like there's a you know like that that's a that's a normal artifact like mm -hmm. somewhere you know in some obscure area and then and you just like oh man so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to like uh fix that and then make sure that my uvs aren't compromised and if they are i'm gonna have to re-unwrap and re relay them out in my uv grid you know but but i think now what's great is after creating after my you know my mesh is after i think my mesh is ready to go i can use this this cleanup tool to help check for anything i might have missed and then you know i it's great like it or even just um like loading a mesh into like substance painter for example and you get the prompt that tells you like oh this has like uh some loose vertices you know and and so it's like oh okay so then you you go back to blender and you just search like select loose geometry or something like that and then you you can get rid of it just like that you know it's 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 uh i don't know like the i i think some of these things have been around forever and i i, I was just too much of a noob to have seen them but there are certainly um some operations that make things so much easier like to to kind of allow you to stamp your seal of approval on on what you just did much faster right and not have to worry about like paying for for overlooking a little mistake in down the line so mm -hmm. yeah it's i'm uh, really enjoying that actually now it's like i'm not even sure i can say that there is any part of the pipeline i don't enjoy anymore because every like almost everything is 
I mean, if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna go through it, like you can just, um, yeah, like load up a, an add-on or something that helps you out with it. And it's great. Yeah. So, so like probably the whole AI uh, revolution is just in our favor in that regard. You know, just making yeah. curious things for us. Yeah. But you know, one thing that really, like, I just, I just saw, uh, I think it was an Ask NK video just to, earlier today um and apparently like the guys behind character creator um like real reillusion right like there's a site so there's a site that uses ai to generate uh like anatomically accurate um human faces so these are like ai generated portraits of people that don't actually exist but you would never have been able to tell unless you looked super closely and now that site is in partnership with Character Creator so that um, you can generate a portrait from that site. And so you've got like, you know, like a, a convincing human face, like with all of the character that you uh, that, that, that you normally would work so hard to put into a into a face, you know, um, and like 80 percent of it of the grunt work is just uh done for you um really well too so basically you get you download a portrait that you generated from that website and then it you can you can load it into character creator and then it creates uh it 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 gets the face and then creates a texture for the you know like you get a fully textured 3d model of that of that ai generated head um for free, yeah. basically. Uh, but yeah. but yeah, but character creator is like I don't know, four hundred dollars. I mean, I'm, and I enjoy making like so. That's kind of my 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 crisis. Well, not really a crisis, but it's like I really enjoy like working towards being able to create uh, like characters, not necessarily like photorealistic characters, but I like paying attention to to. Do like anatomical details, I guess. Yeah, and uh, if you if you want, and by the but, way, if you want to create the, you know, uh, as a more of a stylized, cartoonish uh, character, for example, in Blender, you can uh, really right now you can uh, like use all of this three D pipeline for creation, and then just transfer this mesh to Grease Pencil. That that's one of the features I was playing around lately. Oh, but then really, it becomes a two D character. Y- like I mean, you yeah. Can't, the, yeah, yeah, you know, it's kind of like two D, two D, three D. You know, like two point five D. Yeah, it's 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 a two D, uh, like a three D character made out of two D objects, so to speak. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard to explain. It's really like grease pencil is is not really two. It's no, it's, it's sort not, of but... flat, flat, but it's but it also like introduces your you know vector yeah. shapes that are able to be in three D. So you kind of have this flat look, but with a uh, with a 3D ability, mm, so yeah, yeah, it's kind of halfway between these two, and I really think it's a pretty cool damn thing that's not been explored yet to the full potential. Because well, I don't know, of, man. Like I think it's crazy. Like there isn't there that guy that just like he he actually makes like 3D, uh, like he draws he draws them, and then but he makes like. He draws them in grease pencil, uh, and I don't know if he if he draws on surfaces or whatever. But he ends up coming up with these concepts that you can orbit around, uh, mm-hmm. like in you know in 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 actual three D, which is really cool. Um, and, but yeah, uh, yeah, I see the also like maybe maybe you mean the, this artist that made this splash screen splash screen for one of the blenders, like this this kind of two D three D scenes. Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not nice sure if he ever. Colors. Yeah. Like I, I mean, I I don't remember the name of the guy, but he did like this, uh, you know, blue, blue, purple. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 2D, not that guy. Two D, three D, and he oh, recently cool. I've seen the, like him doing the three D postcards out of this these artworks, like printing out you know uh, these images uh, in the technology you know is when. <laughs> On a postcard that you, when you look from different angles, it's kind of like giving you the illusion of 3D. Wow. Kind of like an old, you know, it's kind of like old fashioned. I think it was popular in in uh, in the 80s or so, or so, you know, these kind of like fake 3D 
post ah you mean like it, so it it skews the image so that it kind of yeah looks yeah, like what, you know, that you know that optical was, illusion yeah, that you he, see in yeah street he was art. able to 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 print these uh, artworks of his and it's kind of looking really really nice you know because it's cool. it, it's got the that that uh, you know stylized and realistic uh shading to it and also the 3d uh so it's kind of like very very creative and really nice looking so it's not it's using Did, like a technique that usually looks like just you know these for for these uh, fake 3d puppies or i don't know animals that's cool <laughs> that's kind of that's like really kitsch, cool you know uh, not really good looking but when you apply this to to this kind of like cartoonish style things it's it's giving giving a really really nice and sophisticated look that's yeah, pretty, pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link that... to that in in the description. Yeah. So you can Didn't he give a talk it. in this year's Beacon, like where it's like he's a uh, like he animated the cutout. Yeah, yeah. Like the character, doll. the cutout, and yeah, it's uh, it kind of like cool. VFX, uh, uh, you know, c- combined with the real footage and stuff. Yeah, so pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, so okay, like I don't know. Like so so what what then would be the uh, the part of the the or how about how about let's rank like can you rank um from first to last your favorite your favorite the least favorite parts of the 3d pipeline well like i said I, like i would rank probably the top uh, <clears throat> well probably the the lighting and shading part would be my favorite and also, I, I really like modeling. When, once you, you know get this thing to look the way you want in terms of form, but this is not really my favorite. I think so. I, I really like to have the basic models and stuff already, and then just uh, taking care for the look of the whole thing. So, texturing, shading, and, and lighting. I think tweaking that is, is giving me the most you know, because it's kind of like. When you almost get the final thing looking, and the least part, the least, uh, the least favorite. Hmm. I'm thinking that all the all the technical stuff, right? So, like I said, for example, the, the simulations, if you need them, you know, the the UV unwrapping that would go pretty low. All the things that that don't have like the yeah the visual impact on your artwork like directly. Yeah, yeah. I'd say the same thing actually. The one, the one interest, the one part of the pipeline that I might enjoy or not enjoy is rendering. Because like when I've when I've really uh like when I when I'm really satisfied with the result and I've made some preview renders or I'm just looking at it in uh like the interactive preview or or maybe just checking it in EV and I know. Um, I know that it's like, like, but my, my rule of thumb is if I can get it to look, if I'm happy with the way it looks in Eevee, I'm like more often than not, it will probably look even better when I render it in cycles. Um, unless it's like, unless I'm making a lot of use of like, uh, manual, like placement of studio lights, cause like the conversion of of energy values between the lights in between both engines is a little it's not really one to one from what i've uh, noticed so far but anyway if if you know like i i if if i can get something i'm happy with in ev then uh and i and i decide to render it in the end in cycles like it i really enjoy that moment of you know like everything is ready to go i hit f12 and then I just kind of make a celebratory coffee or something like that. And I just yeah. feel really good for the rest of the day. It's like, oh, that's going to render for, you know, a couple of hours. No big deal. So I have two hours to just feel like elated. And I like I enjoy that. On the other hand, when there's a deadline and and uh, or, or, like or, I really. Or what you're, or what you're really rendering is a long animation. It's yeah. Or it's right a, yeah. Yeah. Then it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Like I, I hate having to kind of. Uh, uh, like, yeah, like, but always hey, peep well, in. That's what, 
That's why they are edible. Eggs. That's what, yeah, that's what yeah. the render farms are I for. Was, I was getting to that. But yeah, that's that's sort of the, yeah, like that's sort of the advantage, um, I think, of, of being able to send stuff out to a farm, especially a farm that will that will tell you, let you know if something goes wrong and you can be sure that people are checking it for you, making sure that, you know, doing whatever they can to make sure that the frames render the way they're supposed to render. I mean, that, that to me is like a, is a really, it, like will really help me sleep at night when I, um, when I need to render something long. Yo. So yeah. that's probably you know the, the the part that's never going to change. Like I've, I've watched the uh, like I've rewatched the AI talk from from Andrew Price recently, uh, the, the the big leap, uh, the Blender conference uh, talk of uh -huh. his, and he was like quoting Jeff Bezos on this, uh, you know, predicting the future and the things that will change is hard, but it's really more important to to uh, to predict what is not going to change and what is not going to change is that people will not. <laughs> probably will not uh want their renders to take longer right so, <laughs> yeah so that's always going to be the case right the, you always will want better renders and faster renders right so well i don't know like personally i think i might i might miss you know of course like i'd welcome it right you know like when when you can render a, a super long animation in like seconds on on like a on like a mid-level machine at home that would be uh that would be really cool or if you could you know yeah uh, like i like unless, i would enjoy unless, that but then unless you're unless you're yeah probably you're just like a retro you know <laughs> retro vibe freak that uh, really wants yeah. to load load his you know programs to, to his 8-bit computer from a cassette tape deck right <laughs> and or, listen or, to that Listen to that inspiring you, screech sound. Yeah. And wait or for unless you half. really like, you really look forward to the ritual of the celebratory coffee. Because obviously you wouldn't oh. have time to make one while waiting for a render anymore. Um, and then that whole dynamic change. But you know, I mean, that's, that's, that, that's, that's crazy. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course, of course it would be awesome for things to render so much faster. That's, that's called progress. You just have to quit on coffee. Right. Let's just don't mention that to Lab Alexandrov, I guess. <laughs> yeah. His creative shrimp. Uh, well, generally, I think it's a wrap. We already discussed the, the topic and it's mm -hmm. getting to an hour. So I think we can say that this is a wrap. And um, yeah, so uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, we, we're I'll curious just, to know, I'll just like, give what, a, Parts of I'll the pipeline you bit. actually. Oh yeah, um, share share that in the comments. You know, enjoy or not enjoy. Uh, yeah. Keep on rendering. <laughs>